The Sixth Patriarch Sutra, the Sixth Patriarch Dharma Jewel Platform Sutra, the Five Previous Chinese Patriarchs. It wasn't easy being the Sixth Patriarch. Many people wished to kill him and his disciples as well. For this reason, after the Great Master obtained the Dharma, he went into hiding, dwelling among hunters for sixteen years. Even after establishing his Dharma platform at Nanhua Temple, followers of other religions tried to kill him, and so the Great Master hid inside a big rock. He sat there in meditation, and also they set the mountain on fire. He was untouched by the flames. The rock could still be seen when I was at Nanhua Temple. Who wanted to kill him? In general, it wasn't you, and it wasn't me. On the other hand, if you consider the insane things you have done in past lives, it might well have been you, or it could have been me. But in this life, it wasn't you or me, and so there is no need to worry about having broken precepts in this case. As I told you. The Great Master is counted as the sixth patriarch from the first patriarch Buddhist Dharma, who was the twenty-eighth Indian patriarch. Bodhi means enlightenment and Dharma means law. When Buddhist Dharma set sail from India, fulfilling Shakyamuni Buddha's prediction that the Mahayana teaching would be transmitted to China during the time of the twenty-eighth patriarch. The Buddha Dharma already existed in China, yet it was as if it were not there at all. Although there were men who studied, there were few who lectured or recited the sutras, and repentance ceremonies were seldom practiced. Cultivation was superficial. Scholars debated and argued, but none of them truly understood. The principles in the sutras must be cultivated. But at that time in China, they were not cultivated because everyone feared suffering. Now, in America, it is just the same. People sit in meditation. However, as soon as their legs begin to ache, they wince and fudge it, and then gently unbend them. People are just people, and nobody likes to have aching legs. Why still in India? Patriarch Bodhidharma sent two of his disciples, Fou Tuo and Ye Shi, to China to transmit the Southern Enlightenment Dharma door. But no one, not even Chinese bhikshus, would speak to them. So they went to Lu Mountain, where they met the Great Master Yuan Kung, who lectured on mindfulness of the Buddha. Master Yuan asked, "What Dharma do you transmit?" That causes people to pay you so little respect. For Tuo and Ye Shi could not speak Chinese, so they used sign language instead. Raising their arms in the at the air, they said, "Watch." The hand makes a fist, and the fist makes a hand. Is this not quick? Master Yuan replied, "Quick indeed. Body enlightenment and efficient." They said, "Are just that quick." At that moment, Dhamma Master Yuan became enlightened, realizing that originally body and affliction are not different, for body is affliction and affliction is body. He made offerings to Fou Tuo and Ye Shi, and shortly thereafter, the two Indian bishops died on the same day in the same place. Their graves may still be seen at Low Mountain. Patriarch Bodhidharma saw that the rules of the Mahayana, the great vehicle Buddha Dharma, were rife in China, fearing neither the distance nor the hardship of travel. He took the Dharma there. The Chinese called him barbarian because he talked in a way that no one understood. When children looked up at the bearded Bodhidharma, they ran away in terror. Adults feared that. He was a kidnapper, and so told their children to stay away from him. Patriarch Bodhidharma went to Nanjing, where he listened to Dharma Master Shen Kuang explain the sutra. 
When Shen Kuang spoke, the heavens rained fragrant blossoms, and a golden petaled lotus rose from the earth for him to sit upon. However, only those who ate good fruits, who had opened the five eyes and the six spiritual penetrations, were able to see that. Now, isn't this wonderful? After listening to Sutra, Bodhidharma asked, "Dharma Master, what are you doing?" "I'm explaining sutras." Shen Kuang replied, "Why are you explaining sutras? I'm teaching people to end birth and death." "Oh," said Bodhidharma, "exactly. How do you do that? In this sutra, which you explain, the words are black, and the paper is white." How does this teach people to end birth and death? Dharma Master Shen Kuang had nothing to say. How did he teach people to end birth and death? He fumed in silence. Then, even though heavenly maidens rained down flowers and the earth gave forth golden lotuses, Dharma Master Shen Kuang got angry. This is what I mean when I say that. The Buddha Dharma existed in China, but it was as if it were not there at all. When angry, Dharma Master Shen Kuang used his heavy iron beads to level opposition. In response to Bodhi Dharma's question, he reddened with anger and raged with like a tidal wave smashing a mountain. As he whipped out his beads, he snapped. You're slandering the Dharma, and cracked Bodhidharma across the mouth, knocking loose two teeth. Bodhidharma neither moved nor spoke. He hadn't expected such a vicious reply. There is a legend about the teeth of holy men. You must not ask about the principle, however, because it is too inconceivable. The legend says that if a sage sages The sage's teeth fall to the ground. It won't rain for three years. But Shri Buddhidharma thought, if it doesn't rain for three years, people will starve. I have come to China to save living beings, not to kill them. So Buddhidharma did not let his teeth fall to the ground. Instead, he swallowed them and disappeared down the road. Although he had been beaten and reviled. Buddhi Dharma could not go to the government and file suit against Dharma Master Shen Kuang. Those who have left home have to be patient. How much more so must a patriarch forbear? Buddhi Dharma then met a parrot imprisoned in a wicker cage. This bird was much more intelligent than Dharma Master Shen Kuang. Recognizing Bodhidharma as the first patriarch, the bird said, "Mind from the west, mind from the west, teach me a way to escape from this cage." Although Bodhidharma had received no response from people, his parrot recognized him. Hearing the bird's plea to help, Bodhidharma whispered a secret Tibetan teaching to teach this bird how to end suffering. He said. To escape from the cage, to escape from the cage, put out both legs, close both eyes. This is the way to escape from the cage. The parrot listened attentively and said, "All right, I understand." And stuck out his legs, closed his eyes, and waited. When the bird's owner came home from work, he also play, he always played with his parrot. But this time, when he looked in the cage. He was shocked. The owner, the owner was on the verge of tears. Of tears. How couldn't he have been? He couldn't have been more upset if his own son had died. He pulled open the cage door and scooped up the bird, which lay still and quiet in his hand. The body had not chilled, had not yet chilled. The owner looked with disbelief at the little body. He picked at it from the left and right. It didn't even quiver. Slowly, he opened his hand. <sighs> the bird broke loose from his hand and flew away. Now, like the parrot, we are in a cage. How do we escape? You may say I'm really free, 
If I want to eat, I eat. If I want to drink, I drink. I do not have to follow rules. I can do anything. Don't think you are quite so clever. This is not freedom. It is just confusion. To be free, you must be free of birth and death. And then, if you wish to fly into space, you can fly into space. And if you wish to drop into the earth, you can drop into the earth. If you can do this, you are truly independent, like a parrot. You are free. As I explained the Sikh patriarch Dharma Jewel Platform Sutra, I do not lecture well. This is not polite talk. It's true. Some lecture well, yet do not dare explain. After I have lectured, you of true eloquence may follow. When you have opened your wisdom, you will understand. In his great anger, Dharma Master Shen Guang knocked out two of Bodhidharma's teeth. He thought he had won a great victory because the barbarian put forth no opposition. But not long after, the ghost of impermanence, wearing a high hat, bade a call on Master Shen Kuang. Your life ends today, said the ghost. King Yama, the king of the dead, has sent me to escort you. Master Shen Kuang said, What? Must I die? When I speak the drama, flowers fall from the heavens and the earth, but both for the golden lotuses, yet I still have not ended birth and death. Tell me, is there a person in this world who has ended birth and death? There is, came the reply. Who? asked Shen Guang. Tell me and I'll follow him to study the way. He's that black-faced bhikshu whose teeth you just knocked out. King Yama bows to him every day. Please, old ghost, speak to King Yama on my behalf. I want to follow that big shoe. I am determined to end birth and death. Can't you allow me some more time? All right, said the ghost. Since you are sincere, King Yama will wait. Jama Master Shen Kuang was delighted. He was so quick to rush after Bodhidharma that he forgot to, forgot to thank the ghost of impermanence. In fact, he even forgot to put on his shoes. He ran until he met the parrot whom Bodhidharma had freed, and suddenly he understood, originally it is just this way. I need only act dead. I need only be a living dead person. Bodhidharma walked on, ignoring the barefoot Dharma master following behind. Arriving at Best Ear Mountain in Luoyang, the patriarch sat down to meditate, facing a wall. Dharma Master Shen Guang knelt close by. For nine years, patriarch Bodhidharma sat meditating, and Dharma Master Shen Guang knelt beside him, seeking the Dharma. Earlier, when I spoke this public record, an eleven-year-old child asked me, During the nine years he knelt, did he eat or not? I replied, how could anyone kneel for nine years without eating and still live? When the patriarch meditated, Shen Kuang knelt, and when the patriarch ate, Shen Kuang ate. But this is not recorded in the books. While the patriarch was sitting, many people came to bow to him and were received as his disciples. One day, a great snow fell, and it rose in drifts as high as Shen Kuang's waist and yet he continued to kneel. Finally, finally, Patriarch Bodhidharma asked him, Why are you kneeling here in such deep snow? I want to end birth and death, replied Shen Huang. When I was lecturing sutras, I was unsuccessful. Please, Patriarch, transmit this dharma to me. What did you see falling from the sky? Asked Bodhidharma. Snow, said Shen Huang. What color is it? Asked Bodhidharma, it's white, of course. When red snow falls from the sky, said Bodhidharma, I will transmit the Dharma to you. You knocked out two of my teeth, and I have been most compassionate in not taking revenge. Do you really expect me to give you the Dharma? This was a test Patriarch Bodhidharma gave to Master Shen Guang. How did Shen Guang complete the test? Cultivators of the way carry a knife to protect the substance of their precepts. 
A true cultivator would rather cut off his head than break a precept. Shen Guang drew his precept knife, and with one slice he cut off his arm and thus passed his text. His blood flowed on to the new fallen snow. He scooped up a bucket full of crimson snow, dumped it before Bodhidharma and said, Patriarch, do you see the snow is red? Bodhidharma, is, uh, Bodhidharma said, So it is, so it is. He had tested Shen Guang's sincerity, and now the patriarch was extremely happy. My coming to China has not been in vain. I have met a person who dares to use the true might to cultivate the way, even forsaking his arm in search of the Dharma. The patriarch then spoke the Dharma door of using the might to seal the mind. It points straight to the mind and see the nature and realize Buddhahood. By hearing this Dharma, Shen Kuang didn't think about the pain in his arm, and before that he had thought only of making the snow turn red. But now he once again produced this discursive thought. My arm really hurts. He said, my mind is in pain. Please, Pachiak, quiet my mind. Find your mind, said Bodhidharma. Show it to me and we'll... I will quiet it for you. Dharma Master Shen Kuang searched for his mind. He looked in the ten directions, north, east, south, west, in the intermediate points, and up and down. He also looked in the same seven places that the Venerable Ananda looked when Shakyamuni Buddha asked him the same question in the Surangamap Sutra, that is, he looked inside his body, he looked outside his body, he looked for it hidden somewhere in his sense organs, he looked where there was light, he looked at the place where conditions came together, he looked in the middle between the, the organs and their objects, and finally he looked in the place of non-attachment which is no place. At least Shen Kuang said, at last Shen Kuang said to Bodhidharma, I can't find my mind. Great Master, it is nowhere to be found. This is how well I have quieted your mind, said the Patriarch. At these words, Shen Kuang understood the meaning of the Dharma transmission, the wonderful, ineffable principle. Ten thousand Dharmas return to one. Where does the one return? Shen Kuang did not understand and ran after Bodhidharma. Before him, at best, a mountain knelt nine years.